This is Tel Aviv, but it may as well be limbo for the tens of thousands of refugees seeking asylum here. They've all escaped their home countries of Eritrea and Sudan in search of safety. But now they have three stark choices. Go back home, stay and face imprisonment, or accept departure to a third country. If you don't want to stay in the Polot, you have other options. They call it voluntary return, but it's not voluntary. It is, they make us to leave the country. Uh, actually, the government give us two other options as Uganda and Rwanda, but it's not option. We don't have any other option, people choose that, but me, I, I, I will never choose that. Some 11,000 asylum seekers have left Israel for Uganda and Rwanda since agreements were struck, but those deals are shrouded in secrecy, denied by those governments, and left off the official agenda as Israel's premier visits East Africa for the first time in over a decade. Israel knows that many people will not, under any circumstances, return to Sudan or Eritrea, so they have found two unnamed countries in Africa, which we know to be Uganda and Rwanda, that are willing to accept migrants from Israel in exchange for weapons deals with Israel. So if an asylum seeker decides they want to participate in this coerced departure, aka voluntary return program, they can go to the Ministry of Interior and they can either say, I want to go back to my country of origin, Sudan or Eritrea, or I want to go back to a third country, Uganda, Rwanda. Israel has rejected the claim, arguing that those who depart for a third country with a gift of $3,500 in their pockets are in danger. But horror stories of those who did leave have reached the ears of refugees still in Israel. Most of them, uh, they are searching for a new safe place. Most of them are uh, paying a lot of money for smugglers and they start a new journey to Sudan, to Libya, and to Mediterranean Sea. A lot of people dead. Not, m m not most of them are rich Europe. Some of them dead in Mediterranean Sea, some of them dead in Sahara. Just people are living from Israel. But nobody knows that. Rights groups say those who left Israel have become victims of trafficking, left vulnerable with no money and no papers, and nowhere to go, except maybe back to their home country they had to escape from in the first place. The Uganda people sort of see them as infiltrators and therefore it's allowed to send them back to Eritrea and Sudan. So however you look at it, the story with Uganda and Rwanda, I call it a revol revolving door. Options for asylum seekers residing in Israel are few and far between. If they choose deportation, whether voluntary or not, there's no guarantee for their safety. In fact, the only guarantee is that their long and difficult journey in search of a safe haven isn't over yet.